Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are looking for web hosting, I've been using them for eight years now. They power my website, CodeHawk.com. And you can see my resources here on the right. Like I, I don't, I only pay $20 a month and I have a ton of resources, thousands of visitors, and it doesn't cost me uh, next to nothing. So if you compare that to Azure AWS, it just saves me a ton of money. If you sign up for an account with Linode, make sure you use the link in the description tab below because you get a $20 credit. All right, guys, so this video is going to be about Blazor. A lot, of, a lot of you guys have been asking me to do this video and asking me what my thoughts are on Blazor and whether or not it's going to be like the JavaScript killer and is it really going to take over web development. So let's go ahead and talk about all that stuff in this video. So to understand what Blazor is trying to solve, we need to just look at like a brief history of the web. And when we look at modern day web frameworks, and when I say that meaning like over the last decade and a half or so, and we look at things like Django, which is Python, ASP.NET, which, which is C-sharp, Ruby on Rails, which is Ruby, Laravel, which is PHP. And those are all server-side stacks um, using a server-side language. So in addition to that, though, that's your server-side backend development. We have the client-side world of like React, Angular and Vue. So all three of these libraries are written in JavaScript. They run inside the browser. It's considered client-side, meaning that your customer that goes to your website calls out to your server, your server passes back some data. A bunch of code that's getting passed back is executed in the browser. That's all client-side code. Uh, and that's what React, Vue, and Angular are handling. So switching back over to Blazor, Blazor is now trying to really encompass all of that. So a server-side language, C-sharp with .NET, and then also your entire client-side stuff. You're not going to have to worry about Angular, Vue, or React. It's all just going to be Blazor code. And that Blazor code, like I said, is C-sharp primarily. But then you also have this like combination of some like uh, basically – what I would say Blazor's version of like what React's uh, JSX is, like what JSX is to React, Razor is to like Blazor. So Razor is a template engine. It's been around with the MVC framework for .NET for like a long time now, probably 10 plus years. But the uh, Blazor implementation of that is slightly different, but it's very familiar to all the .NET developers. So all the .NET developers out there that have been doing like explicit uh, or just doing C Sharp, like they look at something like Blazor and they're like, oh, maybe I can jump into this web game, web game because a lot of them are like, I'm not messing with JavaScript and all this like framework hell that we've been dealing with. So they've been sitting on the sidelines. So is Blazor going to be that, that killer? Is it going to be the JavaScript killer? Can like all these C-sharp .NET people jump into the web development field with ease? And I think that's what they're all hoping for. So if we um, look at how to get started with Blazor, one of the great things about this project is that it's actually very easy to get started with. You have to install .NET Core, which is the runtime, and now it's cross-platform. So you just grab the latest .NET Core. If you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, um, it, it should work the same. So one common misconception I see is that a lot of people think that you have to use Visual Studio in order to develop Blazor. And that's actually not true because it does work on uh, Visual Studio Code as well. So as an example to show how easy it is to actually set up a project with Visual Studio Code, I have .NET, like I said, installed. And if I open up Visual Studio Code and just say open a terminal, and here I'm going to say uh, .NET new Blazor Wasm, and then just name my project. So I'll just say like my project Wasm. So in just a couple of seconds, it like spins up this project for me. Now, one of the confusing things about Blazor is it is actually like two separate projects. There is both a Blazor Wasm project and then there's a Blazor server project. And they both operate entirely differently. So to see both in action, I, I should probably go ahead and show you that. So we're going to say .NET new. Uh, Blazor server is the other project. So the same thing. We're just going to say my... Uh, project server. Now there is some slight differences between the two, but I'm just going to go ahead and run the um, the Wasm project because that's I think what most people are interested in when they talk about Blazor. And for those of you that don't know, Wasm is really the bytecode that is WebAssembly. So WebAssembly is known as like the the modern day like what we're going to be compiling. 
our games inside the browser using and things like that. Basically, it gives you the, the ability to run now .NET code using this project with Blazor, but other runtimes as well, like C++ game libraries can now run inside the browser using WebAssembly. So with WebAssembly, it's a very new thing, and um, we're we're not really sure like where it's exactly going to take us, and and that's where some of the confusion is, I think, with Blazor because it's like, is Blazor like a WebAssembly thing? Is like all .NET stuff now now going to be like, you know, WebAssembly? Like, should we even do that now? Now, what is Blazor server? Should we be using that? I'll try to answer that in just one moment, but let me go ahead and I'm going to go into my terminal here and go into the project Wasm. I'll just open into that terminal so that uh, I can go ahead and run it. So I just say .NET run to run the project. And this will spin up a localhost address on port 5000. And then you're going to notice like on the Wasm thing. So here's the Wasm project. Uh, this is all using WebAssembly. So it's written in C Sharp, like I said, which is really cool, using .NET Core and then also using the Razor template engine. So you write the code that way, but then what ends up happening for this stuff to run, the .NET Core has to be downloaded by the browser. So like there's DLL files that are actually executed within the browser and they use .NET Core, which is cross-platform. And um, those DLLs are now like what is what, you know, WebAssembly is actually using in order to be able to use like C Sharp and all of the .NET libraries within the browser. So that probably sounds confusing, and uh, in a way it is a little bit, because one of the things that's pro a problem about this particular project, and um, one of the problems that, you know, it's actually a major problem with Blazor is performance. So it doesn't matter whether or not you're using Wasm or the server project, there are performance issues with both of them. All right, so real quick, uh, so I can show you both of these side by side, I can go into my config for the, uh, like where the port is being set, it's under properties, the launch settings. I'm going to take the server side project and just change the port. And uh, open this one up in the terminal. And for debugging, you get an actual localhost HTTPS and also HTTP. But this is the server-side project. So when we reload this one, you can see there is no loading, right? You load this one, there's quite a bit of a load there. That's a, that's a pretty big lag. And I'm on a desktop computer with a pretty fast internet connection. So what, you know, what does it look like on a mobile phone? So anyway, um, th there's a lot of good about this as well. Like I said, th the, the fact that .NET developers, C-sharp developers can just start writing stuff using basic old C-sharp and, and Microsoft uh, kind of, you know, t techniques and things that they're used to, link statements, all that stuff. You can do all that in your web application now using something like Blazor, and you don't have to learn React or the latest JavaScript tooling or any of that stuff. So when we look in the actual source code, you can see like the app.razor. This is stuff that's going to be relatively familiar to you guys. Um, and then the actual individual components that are being uh, imported here are all in these files right now. So you can see one of the issues that, that is happening right out of the gate because this is a new project. And also, maybe this works better in Visual Studio versus Visual Studio Code. Um, you cannot navigate like any short, sort of shortcut. Like this is a custom component, so very similar to React, Development, Vue, Angular, all that stuff. You, you define your components and then you can import them throughout your project, reuse them over and over again. And you can see this one is in the shared survey prompt. And it's just basic HTML and stuff, and you have your actual uh, embedded code. And this is all C-sharp. And um, anyway, the, it, the point being is that like you cannot navigate to your components. There's no way. You go to the, the definition. Like there's no, there's no shortcut to navigate around, so hopefully we can add that in the future. So the biggest benefit, again, is that you can write web applications that are compiling down to Wasm, the downside being that it is slow on the client side because they have to download the entire .NET DLL libraries. Uh, but then you could also do the server-side project. And when we look at the server-side project, the big thing about that is that it is actually both your server and client-side code. So basically every interaction on your web page, every button click, um, every hover, whatever it is, that's sending a signal back and forth to the server using WebSockets.
And the way this is using uh, WebSockets here, so again, all this communication right now is back and forth with the server constantly. So if I click this, it, it's all every time it's communicating with the server. And that's very much different to people that try to maintain their state, like on the client side, and you know maybe they do some basic state ma maintenance, and or even using Redux or whatever. Maybe that you know they're not a constant communication out to the server through traditional web development. I guess it depends on how you architect your site. Uh, I've seen it done both ways where it's calling out all the time. But the, the point is that, is that this architecture, though, it, it can't work offline. It always needs to have a server that is operating. So you guys might not think that's a big deal, but the thing is is that it is a big deal for websites that need to be accessible throughout the world. So if you have a website, like from, from my website, I actually have a website, uh, one of them that's in New Jersey, and I'll deal with some latency for people across the world that are connecting to that. But if I had to constantly like call out to that for every interaction on my page, like it would be a, a very bad customer experience. So unfortunately, at the moment, until they actually solve some of the performance issues, and they even admit, and this stuff isn't something that I'm making up. I mean, this is actually on the Microsoft documentation talking about latency is a big issue. Like, so if latency is an issue at all, your app really shouldn't be using um, the the, uh, the Blazor server project. And then um, in addition to that, like if your app is like a video game or something that is constantly having to update and like a lot of communication, like it's not going to be good for that either. So like really what is this good for? And that's going to be like basic websites that are, you know, restricted to local area networks that like basically if you're like, okay, I'm building some intranet website or something like that. And I know that like latency is not going to be a problem. This, this could easily fit the bill for any of those circumstances. Uh, but if you need something, like I said, accessible everywhere, neither one of these projects is really going to be built for prime time right now just because of performance. And then also, just for the record, I do believe that the um, Blazor Wasm is still in preview mode, so I don't know that they're actually like pushing that as a production option at the moment, but uh, Microsoft is on it. Like The people working on the project, they're, they're on it. They're trying to make it more performant. And until that happens, I really don't think that there's going to be like a big push in the job market. So you can only do so much, you know, to promote something if there's no jobs. And like, you know, it's not something that like, you know, pe like companies and people can actually pick up and use. So hopefully, though, uh, you know, we can. I think it's easy to play around with. You guys should check it out and let me know what you think. All right. So if you guys are trying to learn programming and you want to learn with me, uh, check out my website, CodeHawk.com. There's a link in the description tab below. And I have a bunch of courses on pretty much everything, but I'm releasing new content to that platform. So make sure you guys check that out. All right, bye.